Here is to be found the scene of the early fight for existence, when all about were wilderness teeming with foes. Here is the home of the history of the old town, it is Salem. Edgar Gilbert The idea of meeting houses really came about right from the very beginning when uh, the Puritans started to come to New England in 1630. They didn't want to worship in cathedrals. They were sort of anti-Church uh, of England people, which is the re reason they got expelled really from England. And so when they built a place to worship or have a meeting, uh, they would call it a meeting house. And the early ones were really, really very simple. Uh, the biggest cultural impact uh, that the Puritans uh, gave to us, particularly here in New England, is uh, the form of government that we now call town meeting. Uh, town meeting in colonial times was a brand new concept. Uh, it was the first place in the world where this was really tried out uh, on a grand scale. This whole tradition in this form of government began and was formed and evolved in colonial meeting houses. The people who lived here in Salem uh, lived here before even the the uh, area became part of the state of New Hampshire. The people who lived here were in uh, Haverhill. Salem and Methuen were part of Haverhill. And Haverhill was part of the Massachusetts Bay Colony. The meeting house is older than the town. Methuen, Haverhill, and what is considered now Salem is all one. In 1725, Haverhill broke off. We are now part of Methuen, called North Parish of Methuen. The building was started in 1738, and it was finished in 1740. In 1741, Massachusetts and New Hampshire borders were settled. In 1750, we became incorporated a town, and that was in May, May of 1750. That is why the building is older than the town of Salem, and Salem means peace. Henry Sanders, was a man who lived in town. He owned a sawmill. When the committee got permission to build the meeting house, they commissioned Henry Sanders to provide the wood to build the frame of this meeting house. Now this building is a timber frame building, which means that the frame of the building is made up of heavy timbers. You can see some of those if you go upstairs in this building. And they're made out of logs that Henry Sanders prepared in his sawmill. Later, they decided they needed pews, of course, and that was done at auction. And you would have to buy and make your own pews. And that's why sometimes if you go to the different meeting houses, you'll see the stenciling and the lettering is a little different from each pew as the people would have done it themselves to identify where they're seating. And it was very prominent to sit up close up front. So they would bid on that and want to be the first ones. No difference than today. You want to be up front and recognized. And the man, Abner Bailey, came here, he was about 39 years old at the time. And he was relatively new as a minister. He had just finished his theology studies, came here, and uh, when they were building the meeting house, he got together with the committee that was formed to establish this parish. Here in New Hampshire, separation of church and state happened in 1819 uh, with the Toleration Act of 1819, but it was an evolutionary process that started taking place well before the American Revolution. So as separation of church and state uh, became law and uh, towns had to follow it, one of the things that happened in towns was, you know, you only have one building and these are now supposed to be separate functions and funded separately. How, how, do, how, do, we, how do we deal with that? So true New England frugality, a lot of towns, including Salem, built a floor at the balcony level uh, and they had church upstairs and town hall downstairs or vice versa. And to them, that was separation of church and state. Uh, in the 1900, um, we celebrated the 150th birthday of the town. Uh, the building needs repairs. Edward Searles came 
by, and he said he would match the funds. The town raised $1,000, which is very little. But Edward Searles wanted complete control of redecorating. He hired Henry Vaughan, which was a noted and influential architect of the time. And if you look in some of your records, he also did projects in Washington, D.C. and also in Boston. If you look upstairs, you can see that we have Gothic and English through that, Henry Vaughan. And we have two mysteries. The first mystery is there are S up there in carved wood going around the ceiling. Does the S stand for Salem? Does the S stand for Searles? Does the S stand for Saunders? That's a good mystery. The second is where we had Henry Vaughn do the renovation. Are those the original beams where they exposed the ceiling? Or did they actually come from another building of the same time period? Two mysteries to solve. Well, I imagine that the Meeting House, you could consider having nine lives. It is the considered to be the oldest continuously used Meeting House in the state of New Hampshire. That means that somebody, some organization, group, people, have been using this Meeting House since 1740, when it was, was uh, first completed. I think it's important to uh, remember where we came from and to preserve uh, elements from our past uh, that are uh, important to helping us understand how we got to where we are today. And Meeting Houses are a very important element of shaping us, not only as New Englanders, but as Americans to things like um, participatory government uh, and the importance of worship in our lives, those of us who are church members. I think it's important. It was important then and it's important today.